Hello, welcome to FinTech Impact. I'm your host, Jason Ferreira. Today I show you have Louis Retief, co-founder and CEO of Hubly. Hubly is an advisor workflow automation tool that helps take information from CRMs and create actionable and easy to create and implement workflows for advisors. And with that, here's my interview with Louis. Louis, thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Jason, for having me. Uh, excited to be here today to chat about Hubly and uh, excited to be on the podcast. Yes, well, you first came to me way back before you launched and uh, <laughs> didn't even have something to show me. So it's nice to catch up and, and see how far you've come. All right, so Louis Retief of Hubly, tell us about Hubly. Love to, Jason. So Hubly is a vertical SaaS software that supercharges comprehensive financial advisory firms. You can think of us as Asana or Monday.com, but purpose-built for your highly regulated professional services, like financial advice, tax preparation, trust and will planning, investment management, etc. All right. So we're going to dive into what that means because you just covered a lot of different areas of the advisor workflow. So that's what you do. Tell me about the journey and the history of Hubly altogether. Yeah, so I like to start off this story about two core beliefs that we have at Hubly about the future of the world, and then I'll dive into how we actually got to those. So two core beliefs that we have about the future is, first and foremost, is the billions and billions of dollars, hundreds at this point, that have been invested into new consumer financial products. I know, Jason, you know about all of those, is really? interesting that those new consumer financial products are obviously disrupting how people interact with their finances. But what we care about at Hubly is how is this product innovation in new consumer products actually disrupting how your professional service workers in financial services actually serve their clients? And the second core belief we have about the future is that I think we're just in the early stages of the future of work revolution. COVID was obviously a great catalyst for this. But we've seen um, the effect that this has had in the advisory business and your highly regulated professional services. And then how are these back offices working together to actually service their clients in now a distributed way? And so those are the two core beliefs we have about the future. And so how did we actually laser in on those beliefs about the future is a little bit about my background. So prior to co-founding Hubly, I was working at Wealth Simple. Uh, well, Simple is one of Canada's uh, largest online investment managers, and they do a lot more than that now. I uh, really respect Michael and uh, the journey him and his team have gone down there. So in my role there, um, I helped launch their Well Simple for Advisors business and got to see a lot of the product innovation from a consumer standpoint. And that's when I started asking the questions is, there's been this massive revolution of new fintech products. How is that actually going to perfect, affect the professionals working in the industry? What we did after that was interesting. I called up my now co-founder, Ron, and we decided to go interview some customers. And so we actually, uh, locally here in Vancouver, we went door to door knock. Uh, we interviewed close to 250 households, asking them about their financial experience uh, throughout life, how they made their most difficult financial decisions. And interestingly enough, the, the core pain that we stumbled upon through that journey is that every single person we talked to said they were craving uh, what we called human validation at that point in time. And that's when it really was solidified in Hubley's future that you can't eliminate the human from financial services. That is such an important component of helping people make good financial decisions. That is and sacrilegious so, in Silicon Valley, man. You can replace any human being. No, <laughs> so I often joke that the uh, every time I talk to an engineer in the Valley, it's like, well, financial advisors aren't going to exist. Every time you talk to a human being, it's like they don't want to not talk to a person, right? So, yeah. Anyway, continue. And I, I think you said that, right, is that I don't think that you can eliminate the human. I think the human's got to come a whole lot more productive to service their clients. But ultimately, that human component is so important. And that's when that was solidified in Hubley's future is that the advisor is not going away. And so how can we help the advisor serve more clients is uh, when the journey started about three years ago for us. So that journey started. And in particular, what you did, what you built to give it away, if lack of a better term, is you built a workflow engine, essentially, to integrate with different CRMs, pull that data in and build simply, well, simple to create and basically uh, implement and manage workflows that help advisors run their practice. That about sum it up? Pretty much sums it up. Um, I think why did we build that solution? Like what were the problems that we were fixing is I think the more interesting Excellent. discussion. 
And there's two Stop things. Stop taking away my questions. Go ahead. All right. What problems are you fixing? <laughs> there's two core problems that we found in the advisory business when we started working with our clients. The first is, I'm sure you've heard this before, Jason, but advisors have a massive fear of things falling through the cracks or what I like to call fear of covering their ass. And because you're providing such a human-driven service where you're essentially making promises to your clients on their financial livelihood, there's actually a really core need to track your activities on a day-to-day. And so what Hubly helps do is we integrate with their CRM so they don't have to rekey data to our system. And we help them track a comprehensive service record of every task, project, workflow, and service managed for all of their clients. And it helps them ensure that nothing falls through the cracks. Excellent. So big, definitely a good value proposition. In general, though, here's the thing. We discussed this before on air. A lot of these tools already come with their own kind of workflow automation tools. Can you speak as to where those native ones were kind of falling down or failing to kind of elevate themselves to the level that you have? Yeah. So we have great partnerships with the CRMs in the market um, already. And I think The problem with CRMs in general is that they're trying to do too much. Uh, Actually, building technology is no easy task. And um, they're trying to do both email, calendar, integrations with the other pieces of software. And then they try to sprinkle task and workflow management in there as well. However, those solutions aren't robust enough. The reason they're not robust enough is that if you think about the financial advisory business, you're actually providing one of the most complex services under the sun. And mm-hmm. I think people don't really realize that, how complex of a service you're delivering to your clients. And so we've built a more robust solution. And there's a couple of nitty gritty features that allow advisors to deliver this complex service at scale. One of the simple examples that I'll just give you to explain that is in a CRM, when you build out a workflow, you build out your templated workflow and you assign that to a client. However, um, you know, financial advice and planning is a very personalized service. And so the templated workflow that you assign to that client can't be adjusted for that specific client. Where in Hubly, you create your templated workflow, you assign it to a client, but then you can quickly personalize it based on that client's needs. Something came up for that client. And so we have this core belief, and I think the CRMs missed the mark on that, is that 80% of your business can be standardized or your service to your clients, but there's this core need for personalization. And Hubly has a number of features that allows for that personalization on a client level that CRM workflow technology does not allow. I would agree. And typically, I mean, you know, you can, yes, you can build on that personalization, quote unquote, but you have to think that through in advance in order to build it into the system as opposed to do it on the fly. So that is, I would say that rigidity is definitely a concern. And, you know, I'm going to go back to what you said earlier about, you know, coding software and doing too many things to all people. Like you may have heard this on the podcast before, but I often refer to, unfortunately, advisors want to have the one ring version of the, of software. Like I want just one thing I can log into and it does it all. And my response is always great. It's going to be terrible at everything because there is no software package in the world that is world-class at everything. And I will often pick a Microsoft office at being the perfect example of this. I mean, yeah, Excel's awesome, but everything else drives me insane, especially Teams and their online versions are just garbage. And that's that's one of the world's most valuable companies, right? Like you can't you can't focus on everything. That's not called focus. So it's not surprising that someone comes along and takes a core specific kind of not add-on, but non-core feature of a content management system and a or a contact management system, and then finds a better way to engineer the widget. That does not surprise me. In fact, again, it just you continue to prove my point <laughs> that that you're better off integrating with a bunch of best in class than than you are trying to get everything done in one place. I think the the second core problem that we stumbled upon the first is obviously fear of things falling through the cracks, and the second one is um, what we found is that there's not a lot of tools are actually properly built for the back office workers. Um, A lot of the tools in the advisory space think about the financial advisor as the end user. Um, But as you're well aware, Jason, advisors actually don't use half the tech in their business. Um, The people that are- And you're not kidding. (laughs) Sorry, you're not, not only are you not kidding, you're not kidding in that, like, not only do they not use it, they don't learn to use it and then complain that they can't use it. (laughs) Exactly. And so- our core user is actually the back office worker. It's the administrative personnel, the uh, the head of operations, the customer support agent who are using Hubly on a day-to-day. And so we've been trying to focus from a technology standpoint is how can we make back office workers more efficient, 
less stress, make their work less stressful. And dare I say the work that they do more fun. And so we have this core element of making the lives of back office workers easier and hopefully making them happier because they're actually the individuals delivering 99% of the services that the advisor promises to their clients. And so I'd say that's the second core element of Hubly is we've made the work experience more enjoyable for the back office workers. I'm sure many a person will need to send you a card of thanks if that's the case. And you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, the back office is where the promises made on the front end fall apart, right? It's not that we promise, not necessarily that advisors promise things that can't be delivered, although some bad ones will. It's that what gets promised, the implementation is where it falls flat sometimes. And that is more often than not a back office function. Okay. So what you built from what I can see, I mean, it looks like you've taken a lot of inspiration from other kind of process management tools out there. In particularly, I'm seeing things that look familiar, like, you know, from Trello and, and from the likes of Airtable, um, you know, I guess you didn't want to go reinventing the wheel on this, did you? You wanted to kind of take best in class and apply it to this industry? Correct. Yeah. So process management isn't something new. There's a ton of billion dollar companies that do an amazing job of this. Asana, Monday.com, Trello is another Mm -hmm. example. And so, but there's a number of elements that we're missing for a highly regulated industry like financial advice and planning. And, And it's really simple things that we built into Hubly and we're just at the beginning stages of our roadmap, but something like having an audit trail when a task is uh, edited or when a comment is edited in Hubly um, or in a workflow uh, time completion is changed and having clear tracking of who completed what it are some of the little simple features that we built into Hubly that are highly important in a regulated space like financial advice and planning um, that we're really focusing on. And so we took the user experience that these other tools are doing an amazing job at But we layered in some of the important compliance components for this industry to make Hubly a better solution for what they're trying to accomplish. Makes total sense. Why reinvent the wheel if you don't have to, especially if those companies have spent so much time and money figuring out how to engineer it properly, right? So so smart move. But again, taking that vertical specific knowledge and applying it directly over top of that framework, you know, end of the day, they built something generic. They didn't build something for this industry. And really, it's like the same thing about dealing with niche advisors. You're better off dealing with an advisor who understands your specific niche than you are dealing with a generalist. I'll just comment on that. I think what you see if you if you sign up for an Asana or Trello, right? They have an entire templates library of workflows or task systems to use. And and a lot of those template libraries are focused on either product management, some sort of engineering, um, some sort of marketing pipeline, sales, et cetera, which is great, but that is not what financial advice and planning is. And so we've just built a content library of workflows that is purpose-built for this industry. And those players haven't developed that because they don't understand the business, which is a highly service-oriented business. And so we've built out our content to just match our clients' use cases. So it makes it easier to get started and easier to improve and develop workflows that help deliver a better client experience. Cool. Thanks. So let's talk about the integrations. I mean, you've integrated with um, two of the better known uh, CRMs in the space, Redtail and Wealthbox. We talked about uh, your plans for Salesforce. Hopefully that's not uh, giving away secrets, but honestly, anyone who looked at you for 30 seconds would say you probably have to integrate with Salesforce. <laughs> uh, and then you've also got the general Zapier integration to let people integrate into anything else they want. Talk to me about, I mean, the CRM integrations are absolutely vital and important. Talk to me about what goes beyond that. Like after you're done those, you cross that bridge, where do you see this going in terms of who you want to plug into? It's a good question. And I think we're, we're still uh, fully understanding that roadmap. I think ultimately the way we look at it is that we've been collecting a ton of workflow data. We've collected, we've helped complete over 65,000 workflows and over a quarter million tasks for clients. And so I think the better question to ask is, is what have we learned and what are advisors using Hubly for? And so I think there's kind of three core um, use cases or elements that Hubly is used, used for. And I think this is large part going to determine our roadmap. The, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the great thing is now you have the data. I mean, forget what you think. You can actually see what's effective, right? If you can see that for a certain type of, I don't know, implementation of something that, you know, firms who have these three or this type of process that are 80% the same have an implementation rate of 95%, you know, you can take that and template that and, you know, basically make that more effective for everybody. It's exactly the the, the plan. And so we've been trying to find where where is there room for standardization across the advisory uh, industry. Um, and the three core areas we found room for standardization is, is one is client onboarding procedures are very similar across the board. 
is a prospect comes in from the website. And so we've built simple Zapier automations where a prospect fills out a form or schedules a Calendly call via the website, they get added into a Hubly workflow. And so just managing the top of funnel all the way to the onboarding process and account setup processes for a new client is uh, where we see a lot of room for automation, integrations with document collection, um, form filling software, et cetera. The second core area we've seen opportunity on is regulation-wise, advisors have to do a yearly check-in with their clients. Most of the really good advisors are checking in two, three, or upwards of four times a year with their clients. And so there's a massive bottleneck around the scheduling process of new of getting clients scheduled in for their review or check-in, the preparation component for those meetings, and tracking all the follow-ups and the promises that advisors make making in those meetings. And so we see a lot of room for um, integrations with uh, software, scheduling software, calendar software, and then all the preparation software that you need in order to be ready for a client meeting. And the, the third area where we see probably the most opportunity, because it's the biggest, is at Hubly what we call managing client cases or projects. You'll find this interesting, Jason. We've actually looked at the underlying data. The average advisory firm has two or three ongoing cases or projects per household. And so if you're managing 100 households, which is pretty normal, you could be juggling upwards of 300 ongoing projects. This can be RMDs, um, opening up a new investment account, money disbursement, uh, money transfer, an insurance review, uh, retirement analysis, tax planning, social security review. The list goes on of, of cases that advisors need to manage. And we see more than 60 to 70% of the work that they're doing Hubly is case-based. It's a client needs something, some project or case delivered to them. And so there's a ton of uh, opportunity here around integrating with third-party providers or integrating with other service professionals that are delivering those services. And so that's where we see a lot of opportunity in helping advisors further streamline the services they deliver. So it's funny, when you said two to three per household, I thought, what are you kidding me? And then, you know, just when you get into what you define that as, absolutely. I mean, there's routine things like just account rebalancing. That's an ongoing thing for every for every household, right? So that is, that's a checkbox that goes behind all, beyond all of them, right? So I can totally see how that number would be even, even greater when you think about that, when you think about the aggregate book work you do versus the, the individual client work you do. So yeah. There's there's no there's no lack of complexity in our businesses, that's for sure. Just comment quickly, like a couple of things we already built into Hubly, which makes that ongoing service component a whole lot easier, is um, in our workflows, you can build something called a workflow rule. Um, that's a recurring rule or a rule based on a date. And so a lot of our advisors, for example, they want to know when clients turn 72 and a half years old to start the R&D process or 65 for social security review, or they want to do uh, portfolio rebalances every quarter for all their clients. And so you can set up rules that automatically trigger these workflows for clients based on their service needs that they have. And so those are some of the automations we already built into Hubly. And I think we're just at the beginning stages of what we can really do for that. So talk to me about the overlap between or the demarcation between the work done in the CRM and the work done in Hubly, right? So, I mean, you know, we have tasks set into the future recurring to do certain things and whatnot. And then I'm guessing that the way you probably look at it is like record your history of interaction in the CRM, but then all the ongoing work happens in Hubly, or is there a different way to look at that? It's a good question. So I think there's a couple of ways we look at this is that we look at the CRM's roadmap. Like what are they prioritizing? And most CRMs, especially Redtail and Wealthbox, are prioritizing more and more integrations. I think I get a weekly email from both CRMs that we just released a new integration. And so we see the CRM as being the core database for the client record. They're going to get in account information, all of those things, and they're hopefully going to continue improving their API that's going to allow providers like us to get access to that data. Hubly, what our current advisors do is we're actually the system that they work in most of the time. They're spending 95% of their time in Hubly and the CRM is becoming their database. And so how that works is we pull the existing client information into Hubly. They conduct the activities, services, tasks, workflows, projects, et cetera, in Hubly for their clients. And then we log that back into the CRM. And so we see the CRM as being the redundant compliant database for the client ledger. So we push back those activities back into the CRM uh, to make sure that they have that uh, compliant uh, history that's very important for regulators, et cetera. Excellent. So at the end of the day, you're making sure the things that need to go in the CRM definitely go in the CRM, but the tracking of, I guess, maybe not, not everything goes in there. Just the existence of the fact that I have to do this for all my accounts or certain accounts, 
doesn't sit in the CRM. It sits in, in the workflow tool, which is you. Correct. Okay. So one of the things we talked about before we jumped on this call was um, the confusion around the concepts of workflow, automation, and process. Uh, can you care to elaborate on the difference between those three? Yeah, I'm going to start with a simple analogy that I actually am um, stealing from Ariel Minakoza. She's the founder of Things Automation. She, she worked closely with us and a number of clients, but I think she had the best quote that I've heard of this, and I want to give her credit for that, is that she explained that your process or workflow for your business is like a cake. And the automation that you want to layer into your business is the icing. Now, eating icing without any cake tastes awful. It doesn't work. And nobody wants to do that. I feel we will highly disagree with you on that. Okay? <laughs> you know, like, it's cupcake icing and then the cupcake doesn't get touched. But continue. So a lot of advisors jump the cake building component and just want the icing. They're kind of like kids in a candy store. <laughs> and so what we highly recommend is like, Automation is absolutely useless until you have a good process in place. Once you have a repeatable and standardized process in place, laying on automation is so simple and easy to do. And so at Hubly, we're focused on the cake building component is how do we help you build a infrastructure or a repeatable process that's going to help you deliver a consistent client experience. Once that's done properly, layering on automation becomes uh, the second part of the problem is how do you actually make yourselves 10 times more efficient? So that's kind of how we look at that problem. And I think a lot of advisors make a mistake to jump to the automation component without having the right process or workflow in place for the delivery of something. Everyone wants to go to heaven, no one wants to die, man. Yeah, everyone wants to go to heaven and no one wants to die to get there. I get that. And it's funny because, you know, when people talk to me, come the advisors reach out to me like, oh, I want this and that and that. I want to do all this stuff you're talking about. It's like, great. Well, you know, what have you done to date? Well, you know, I'm, yeah, I, I need to pick a CRM. I'm like, okay, so here's what you're going to do. You can implement the CRM and then you're going to put notes in it for six months. And then you can consider your separate option. And then they're like, okay, well, I want to automate my entire practice. I'm like, great. Can you show me the actual workflows that you've developed um, and written down and processes that you've actually built? No. Well, you can't automate something that doesn't exist. So yeah, get yourself whimsical, whatever else it is, and map it all out and make sure you understand everything. And then you can start to automate it. And then, you know, you can't, it's also a checklist. It can't be, it can't be automated. So excellent. Uh, all right. So to date, quite honestly, you've done, I'm actually quite impressed at how much ground you've covered in the first year and the scale you've gotten to. So, so good on you. And it's, um, it's quite interesting because I mean, I think the ability to, what's really going to make it for you going forward is, is the ability to, to take best practices and, and harvest that data from across the board and actually nudge advisors' practices into a better into, in, into better behaviors. So the way we're thinking about that is that I think financial advisors are, are great at helping clients with their finances. I think where they struggle is being good business operators. And so we see that as being the really good opportunity here. So what we're doing in that case is, one, we're developing our own uh, workflow library where advisors can adopt the best practices for workflow management. Uh, in just the last year, we have over 60 plus workflow templates on how to do client prospecting, tax preparation and planning, RMDs, insurance reviews, et cetera. But where we're going with that is that we are also limited in our ability to develop best practices. And so we're working towards a future where we can have user-generated content on best practices workflows. We know that there are advisors based out of Seattle that specialize in employee stock option planning for your large uh, corporates like Amazon, Microsoft. And so why can't they make a workflow available to other advisors who care about that type of service? And so we're working to a future where we have a user-generated workflow library um, that other advisors can adopt and learn from one another. So before we wrap up, there's three questions I ask everyone, which if you listen to multiple podcasts, you're probably ready for now. But the, uh, first, the first one is, if you had one wish or something could change in your company or the industry as a whole, what would it be? I think this one's quite simple for me and, and the Hubly team is that we want to spotlight the back office workers. I think there's a lot of focus on the advisor, a lot of tech bills for the advisor, um, however, they're not the main users of any software in a product or in a firm. And so we want to spotlight the back office workers and the amazing work that they do on a day to day. They perform highly administrative repetitive procedures, and we want to help make their lives easier. And I think if there can be a higher level of focus on what the back office are doing across all technology that's developed in the industry, I think we'll be able to go a far way in making these services more accessible to more people question I have for you is what's been the biggest challenge in getting a company to where it is today? 
I think this one's interesting. And I, I was thinking about this quite a bit, but I'd say our, our own workflow and process management. It's funny, once you start building a product for uh, businesses to help them make be better at process and workflow management, you actually, through doing that, you spotlight a lot of your own inefficiency. And so as a company, we're very much from a cultural standpoint, focused on process and workflows for our own business. And because we preach to our clients that, hey, you need a workflow for this, we sometimes look at ourselves, we're like, wait, do we have a workflow? for that. <laughs> and so I think the, the biggest challenge is actually like what I like to call to the team and they hate this is like, we've been eating our own dog food and really specializing in, okay, can we humbly become the best workflow and process manager and how we operate our business if we're going to be telling other businesses to operate like that. And so it's been an interesting dichotomy that we've created in our own organization, but it's actually made us a lot more robust as a company where we have now processes and workflows to train new employees on to come in and be highly productive to service our clients. Yeah, well, frankly, I'll, I'll lump this into the old category of I won't trust a chef who doesn't need his own cooking, at least for at least on occasion. That's not to be every night. But yeah, I mean, frankly, if you're not going to live and breathe it, then you're not really meaning it. So good on you for making them eat, quote unquote, the dog food, although you can use a nicer expression to explain that. Last question I have for you is what excites you the most about what it is you're working on and keeps you getting up out of, out of bed in the morning to keep on fighting the good fight? I think there's, there's two things in the roadmap that we're super excited about, but As a company, we measure our success in in one simple way. Our success is measured from how many more end clients can get access to the services our advisors deliver. Currently, we're servicing 14,773 end clients. And so we really care about how many end clients are getting access to these services. And so from the things that excite me from a roadmap standpoint as a company is what things are we going to deliver that's going to allow us to service more end clients? And so there's two things that we're working towards. One is to make Hubly self-service so your smaller advisory firms and solo advisors can get started with Hubly a lot more efficiently. Uh, leveraging the best practices content library that we're currently developing. And the second one is obviously starting to work with larger and larger advisory firms in the enterprise space that are already service hundreds, if not thousands of clients and helping them do that more efficiently across their business. And so that's what gets me out of bed in the morning is how many more end clients are we delivering awesome services to? And that's uh, how we measure our success. Excellent. So thank you so much for taking time. We very much appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jason, for having us here today. Uh, Really excited to be on the podcast after launching Hubly 18 months ago. I know we chatted before the product was launched and uh, really excited to be on here and tell people a little bit about what we've done at Hubly and what we plan to do next. Well, looking looking forward to see it continue to develop. So that was today's episode of FinTech Impact. I hope you enjoy that. And as always, if you enjoy this podcast, please review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And until next time, take care. This podcast was brought to you by Woodgate Financial, an award-winning financial planning firm catering to high net worth individuals and their families. To learn more, go to woodgate.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play, or find more episodes at jasonperera.ca.